All right, this is your place's call. You're listening to episode seven of Theatrical Thoughts. My name is Emily Wyra. And I'm Jessica Fight. And today we are joined by Javon McFerrin. Um, after making his Broadway debut in Motown back in 2014, Javon joined the Broadway company of Hamilton, taking the production, I think it's safe to say, by storm and covering numerous tracks within the show. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Oh, I'm super stoked to be here. How's it going? How's the day been so far? Uh, it's been good. I mean, I, I, nothing really awesome happened today. I went, I went to the dentist. So that was cool. Uh, no cavities. So that's always a plus. Uh, and then, um, yeah, me and my girlfriend are probably going to watch. Um, I think we're going to watch Nomadland tonight. So that's basically, we've just been watching a lot of TV and shows and movies during this pandemic and, uh, and playing with our cat. So that's basically what's been going on for the last, last year. That's amazing. That's <laughs> Honestly, everybody feels the same way. What have you guys been watching? Anything particularly good that I need to check out? <laughs> I always need new shows. I watch I watch Friends just over and over again. <laughs> Me too. Um, but, uh, I mean, I, I liked Bridgerton. My girlfriend didn't. Uh, I watched The Boys on Amazon. Uh, I love, oh, uh, Peaky Blinders is a great show. Um, honestly, I'll kind of just watch anything, but usually we end up watching a lot of family feud and just yelling at the TV and trying to figure out the answers. My girlfriend's really good at it. So <laughs> but, yeah, on. family feud is definitely, I'm, I, I'm sure it's going to be a whole process to take a very long time to be on that show, but I am positive that me and my girlfriend will be on that show one day <laughs> and I'm sure she's going to crush it. <laughs> I feel like I would be terrible. I would crack under the pressure of that show. <laughs> no, she's great. She'll be like, yeah, they should have passed on that one. No, it's too many hard answers. And I was like, wow, you're really good at this. She's actually quite phenomenal at Family Feud at home. I, I can't hold a candle to her. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so the way we usually start our episodes is doing a 60 second life story. So Emily will start a, time, start a timer and just tell us your life in 60 seconds. Okay, ready? Ready. Set, go. All right, I was born May 27th, 1985 at 7.47 p.m. in San Francisco at Mount Zion Hospital. My dad's name is Bobby. My mom's name is Debbie. I have an older brother, Taylor. I'm the middle child. And then my little sister, Maddie, we left uh, San Francisco in... 1993, I believe, uh, and then we moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, I worked in the 500 Hats of Bobby Cubbins at the Children's Theater, and then we moved from Minnesota to Philadelphia, went to Creative Performing Arts High School out there, graduated in 2003, and then moved to New York, went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, graduated in 2005, did a lot of odd jobs, waited tables, uh, kind of fell into Broadway, went to Motown, I think 2014, and then joined Hamilton in 2017. And now I'm on 20s on BET with Lena Waithe. Okay, that was the most comprehensive 50 seconds I think we've heard on the show so far. Yes. That was amazing. That was yes. so much better than Emily and mine when we did ours the first episode. <laughs> I still had 10 seconds to spare. I feel super stoked. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Not gonna lie, very impressed. So performing arts high school, you're saying, so was that like a big part of your kind of growing up in Minneapolis too? Or like, how did you kind of get into performing that young? Uh, no, uh, my dad is a musician, um, Bobby McFerrin, and we've always really been around uh, music and the industry. And we all kind of just fell into it in our own, in our own way. Uh, neither one of my parents pushed us in that direction. Uh, my brother and sister are both musicians and they're doing really well for themselves. I somehow became the actor of the three of us. And um, I just really always enjoyed theater. So uh, the school I went to in Minnesota, Breck, uh, I had a great acting teacher there, Tom Haig, who actually retired a few years ago. Um, uh, actually, yeah, cool story about Tom. Uh, I was playing Hamilton and Somebody came backstage for a tour and they're like, oh, we lived in uh, Minnesota. I was like, oh, I lived there too. I went to the school called Breck. 
And they're like, oh, we go to Breck too. And I was like, oh, is Tom Haig still there? And she's like, yeah, he's actually retiring this year. So I was like, excuse me, I left the stage, I got a playbill and I signed it, personalized it for my old acting teacher. I said to Tom Haig, you're the reason I'm here, Javon McFerrin. And I really hope that they gave him this playbill. <laughs> but um, so he was a huge part of it for me uh, at that school because it was a, like a college preparatory school. So like um, a, a lot of school work, but to be able to have at least one period a day of, of drama work was really fun. And then uh, I went to Kappa, the Creative and Performing Arts High School in Philadelphia for my last two years. And I was in choir and I was in acting class. Uh, and then after that, I kind of auditioned for some schools, but mostly I kind of put all my eggs in one basket at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Um, and, and, you know, I had great teachers there. I had Janice Powell, I had Jackie Bartone, I had Jim Demonic. Uh, and so it was just, I'm very lucky with the teachers that I've had along along the way, but uh, yeah, I, it, I, I've always just really enjoyed the stage, so that's what I've always really gravitated to. That's amazing. So, would you say there was like a particular moment or a part of your kind of upbringing, your childhood, that really asserted to you, like, no, I'm I'm going to be an actor. This is what I'm going to do, or was it just sort of an overall culmination for you? Um, I think it was the overall thing. Like I remember just catching the bug really early and then always asking my parents if I could do it. And, you know, if I could, I could, if I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't. Um, I mean, also my, my school in San Francisco, San Francisco school, like we, you know, first through fifth grade always had like their class play. And so like, well, I, I got to do all that. I played like a singing parrot in my first grade play and I thought it was amazing. Um, but no, I've always, I've always just really, really in, enjoyed it. And I've been very lucky that my parents have, um, have supported me in, in that way. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Awesome. So before the start of your Broadway career, what would you say was your favorite project you were a part of? Oh, uh, Rent up at the Hangar Theater, uh, where I met my really good friend, Nick Walker, who's still my best friend to this day. Um, that was just uh, a perfectly cast community. Um, we had like Danielle Brooks was a part of it. She was, I think she was about to start college or she had just finished her first year at Juilliard. Um, Asia Dillon from the show Billions was in our cast. Uh, Nick Walker, who is, uh, I've, we've done what, two Broadway shows together. And now he was, he took over for Derek Baskin and Ain't Too Proud. And he only got to do like two weeks of shows before COVID hit. Uh, and then Eric Jordan Young, who's been working forever, uh, was also in that as well. But yeah, that was probably just a very, very cool summer. And there was like, there was no beef. There was no divas. Um, everybody kind of, came to work and it was it was probably one of the funnest summers that I've I've ever had especially working on a show and I still talk to a lot of the people in that in that cast today so I would say I would say that I would I would, I would say rent yeah for sure the community element of theater I think is so huge I think that like yeah about that that's just magic I think that's something that we all really miss during this pandemic it's you know community Definitely. Yeah. Emily and I always say that one of our favorite things about theater is the community it brings. So mm -hmm. we definitely understand that. Yeah. So now following Rent a few years later, I want to say you made your Broadway debut back in 2014, right? In Motown. Yeah. So what mm -hmm. was that kind of experience like, Broadway debut in such an amazing show? <laughs> uh, well, it, it, it all kind of started with Hamilton and I kind of fell into Motown. Uh, so what happened was I auditioned for Hamilton when it was still at the public, uh, or it was about to be at the public and, uh, I didn't get it, but the casting director, uh, at Telsey was also casting 
some replacements for Motown around the same time. So I had sent in a random video because uh, I was in LA at the time. I sent a, a video of me singing some Motown songs and then I got a call and basically they were like, so they want you on the show, but you have to audition in person. So you have to, you have two days to get back to New York to audition or else you, or else you're not going to be on Broadway. So I, I packed real quick, like real quick. I was so nervous that I, um, and so flustered that I actually left one of my suitcases in my rental car. So I had to go back and get my suitcase out of the rental car and still make, my, still make my flight. Um, so yeah, all of it kind of circled back to, to Hamilton because of the casting office, because of Telsey. And um, I believe it was Bethany Knox, who was, who was the casting director. I'm, she probably still is the casting director for, for Hamilton. Um, but yeah, so I auditioned for that didn't book it, fell into Motown, which was awesome. Uh, made a lot of great friends there. A lot of those people who I knew that were great in Motown also kind of joined me a little bit afterwards after I came in in Hamilton. So we had a joke, we called it Hamilton. Uh, but it was great. And you know, just going to just going to work with my friends. So um, that's how the whole Motown thing happened. And I was in the show uh, for like a year um, because the, our theater got bought out by, by Harvey Weinstein because he wanted to put on uh, Finding Neverland and that's the theater that he, he wanted. So we were super gracious. We got like a three month notice, which doesn't happen like ever on Broadway. Like, you know, if, if you're closing out, you find out a, a week or a month like we had three months to plan it all out which was which was cool um and then yeah um hamilton happened like a year and a half later i think it, yeah, hamilton happened like 2017 18 but i don't even know what time is anymore so i'm sure that you have that fact for me so that's so wild so what like what's going through your head as you're kind of packing that suitcase and you've got two days to get to the city like what was that whole kind of process like um it was I didn't know to, what to expect because I never really thought I was going to be on Broadway I didn't I, like musicals weren't really um something I was like into like no disrespect to to musicals or anything it just wasn't something that I felt like I was pursuing I wanted to do like straight plays or tv and film and um you know, my brother and sister were doing the music thing and I kind of wanted to like not do the music thing. But I also, my biggest fear was like the dancing. Cause I'm a mover, I'm not like a dancer. Like I'm not like a trained dancer. Like, you know, I know first, second, third, fourth and fifth position and that's about it. Um, <laughs> I feel so that. <laughs> I, I, I was just a lot more nervous about, especially cause I, so I flew in and they told me to wear like a, a suit to the audition. And I sang my songs. I did a little dance combo in my suit. And they were always like, plie a little bit more. And I was like, if I plie anymore, I'm gonna rip my pants. So they're like, all right, okay. And so they made, then they just, they gave me tickets to the show. I left the room and they're like, you're gonna get a call in five minutes. And before I even got to the elevator, I got a phone call. They told me I booked it. And then they gave me tickets to go see the matinee. And then I saw the matinee. And then after the matinee, I had to go backstage and get measured for my costumes. And then I started rehearsals the next Monday. Um, and I think I, I think I debuted like maybe like five weeks later, something like that, five, six weeks, I think, I think is what it was. And then, yeah, um, I was a uh, featured ensemble track and uh, the Smokey Robinson understudy. That's crazy that they told you about five minutes after you left the room. Yeah, well, they knew that they wanted me, but they had to put me through like the formalities of like the entire audition process and stuff. 
Um, but even though I felt like I still had the job, I was still very, very nervous going in there to audition because like, you know, I could still mess it up. And then they're like, ooh, you know what? This wasn't a good idea to bring him in. Let's go with the other person we were maybe thinking of. So, but shout out to that whole Motown team for, uh, for giving me a job. So wild. So now you're mentioning that was kind of, it kind of bled right into Hamilton. So how did you sort of make that jump into that show? So Hamilton uh, was like a two year process. Um, I had another audition and every time I had auditions, I got pretty far. I had at least two callbacks, two or three. And then I just, you know, something happened. I didn't get it. I think the, the second time I went in is when they knew they were going to transfer to Broadway and the original cast, they all went. So it was kind of like a formality to like just keep people in the file that they knew that they might like, but everybody from the cast went to Broadway. So there was no extra spots. But this is also before they figured out that they needed more bodies in the show because Hamilton is such a difficult physical show. So then uh, it had been on Broadway for a, a while. I mean, it's the biggest thing in, in the universe. And my agents give me a call and they're like, all right, they want to see you one more time, but you have to get through the dance call. And I was like, ah, crap. So I did that. And Stephanie Clemens, who's like Andy Blankenbuehler's number two, uh, really saw that I was like trying. And I was like super upbeat. I was just happy to be there. I was like, I, m I made a really good friend in the audition. It was me, Jin Ha, um, who was also in the live uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. He was on that television show, Devs. He's a, he's a fantastic actor. Uh, and then somebody else who was in the ensemble of Aladdin, I think. So it was just the three of us. And I made it through that dance call somehow. But I also like looked at Andy Blank, Blank and Bueller's stuff on YouTube because I was like, all right, well, if we're doing like maybe if we do this dance combination, I can kind of learn it. And then like they'll think I can dance. We did a completely different dance combination. And so that didn't help me at all. Uh, but I made it through and then I got a call and they're like, all right, uh, they're, they're thinking about having you be a standby for Chicago. I was like, oh, okay. I didn't really want to go to Chicago. Um, but I was like, all right, that's whatever, that's cool. Uh, and so they gave me a whole bunch of music to learn. I had like a week. I think to learn the general mail packet, which is uh, the, you know, the top of the show, Dear Theodosia, and or maybe one other thing, I don't remember. I might have the music around here somewhere. Uh, and um, Burr stuff and Washington stuff and Lafayette Jefferson stuff. So they gave me like a whole bunch of music. And I really wanted to impress them. So I got fully off book, um, which was very hard for this show. It's a difficult, it's a very difficult show. Um, and so I did it. And for this first go around when I sang, so for this go around, it was Lynn was in the room, Tommy Kale was in the room, Alex Blackmore was in the room. Uh, and so I sang all my songs. I made a very bold choice just for me at that time because, you know, Lynn was now officially Lynn. And I sang um, History Has Its Eyes on You to Lynn because they just wanted to hear it. And I was like, all right, well, Washington sings this to Hamilton, so I might as well do that. So I did that, but it was still very nerve wracking. Uh, and then I got a call again for another callback uh, and, uh, they were like, all right, cool. You're going to do everything you did, except for now you're going to learn the full songs. So then I had to learn the full songs of like, you know, what did I miss? Uh, History has a size on you. Um, the world was wide enough. Room where it happens. Uh, all that stuff, right? And then I go in and uh, I start singing. The first thing they have me sing, well, Lynn had to leave. So I'm waiting in the hallway. So I was about to go and Lynn 
leaves, but then he's like, Javon. And he comes and he like sits down and talks to me for like five minutes, which was very weird for me because he knew my name. <laughs> and, you know, it's just like I was just bugging. And, I'm, and it's always weird, like if when you get a little flustered, like, you know, when you're sitting outside of an audition room, you're kind of like trying to do your thing. And then like the biggest dude on Broadway sits down to have a conversation with you and kind of throws you off your game. But I was like, all right, well, that's cool. Maybe that's a good sign. So then I go into the room and the whole team is there. So TK is still there, Black is still there, and then, you know, everybody else. And I sing, what did I miss? But the piano player stopped after the first verse and I kept singing. And, and then the piano player like caught up and then we finished the song and then Tommy Kale was like, oh, so why did you, why'd you sing the whole song? And you know, when you say something and as the words come out of your mouth, you're like, mm, I shouldn't have said that. So I said, oh, well, that's what you gave me. And I was so like, oh, you're so dumb. But then Alex Blackmore jumped in. He's like, you know what? He's right. That is what we gave him. I probably didn't update the audition stuff because they were also in the process of like auditioning a lot of people and fixing things and you know all, all their stuff so um I did what I was supposed to do but then I felt like I messed up by saying that I was supposed to do that but thanks Alex Lacamoire for for saving my butt on that one so then uh so I did that I sang like literally everything and then I get a call like a, a day or two later or something. And they're like, so you got it, but not yet. And I was like, well, what do you mean? They're like, it's okay, so now they want to keep you in New York. And I was like, oh, great, awesome. Now I don't have to go anywhere. Um, but now they want you to, to learn Hamilton. So you have to learn like a, a, a big chunk of my shot and both the cabinet battles. And I think I had like two days to learn it. And it was by far my worst audition um, because I was trying to be like off book and impressed, but, uh, and that this final audition was just Tommy Kale and Alex Lacamoire in the room and a, and a piano player. And, uh, and I just kept fumbling stuff. They're like, dude, just go get your music. Like, we know you can learn. We just want to see you do it. And I was like, all right, cool. So then I did it. And then I got, uh, the day I found out I got it, I was going to ABC uh, because I had an audition. And I knew I was going to find out. I, like, I knew I was getting some sort of phone call that to you know seal my fate and uh i the first like cool clue that it was going to be a good day is i was walking in the subway and there was a ten dollar bill on the street so i picked that up and i was like perfect this is gonna be a good day did the audition said hi to everybody that i know there and then i left and then i'm in the subway and I see a really good family friend, uh, Bill Irwin, who, if you guys don't know who he is, Google him. He's probably one of the greatest clowners and physical body performers ever. He's phenomenal. He also won a Tony for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf uh, a while ago. He's just, he's, he's, he's a phenomenal actor. And I saw him and I was like, Bill, hey, what's up? And it was a super hot day. He's like sweating through his clothes. And he's like, Javon, how are you? I was like, oh, I just got done with audition. I'm, I'm going to hear about Hamilton today. And he was like, oh, well, I'm actually going to Leslie Odom Jr.'s like CD signing or book signing. Leslie had something going on at, at a Barnes and Noble. And I was like, well, that's awesome. So his train comes, he gets on the train. And then uh, I got a phone call. Uh, from my agent and they told me that I that I booked it now mind you to give you context of what was happening in New York at that time there was a couple of like bomb scares where people were like leaving bags in subways and like so uh, I didn't want to make a commotion or 
be loud or draw attention to myself. So I'm on the phone, I'm silently like celebrating. And then I leave the subway station and I go into the middle of Central Park and then I have my total freak out. So I could be as loud as I wanted to. Um, and then I started rehearsals. And the cool thing was when I started rehearsals, uh, Brandon Victor Dixon was starting rehearsals too. So we got to learn the show at the same time. Uh, which was a lot of fun because then it wasn't just kind of just like I definitely had a lot of rehearsals by myself but there were rehearsals where we would work together um, and do the show at the same time and so the plan was we were going to debut at the same time and so that worked out perfectly and also I had worked with Brandon in Motown so it wasn't like oh you're a stranger how are we going to work together I knew I know how Brandon works We've been cool for a while. So that was just a really fun experience. And then six weeks later, I made my debut as Lafayette Jefferson. He was, Lafayette was the first role that I learned out of, out of the four. And that's, that's my Hamilton story. That's wow, that's, <laughs> that is wild. Emily and I are just sitting here like, tell us more, tell us more. <laughs> That is so cool. So you said that you learned Lafayette first of the four, and then what were what was after that? Mulligan was after that, and uh, shout out to my friend Voltaire, who was uh, he's an OG Hamilton guy, and he was the dance captain. He was my dance captain. He taught me everything, and um, <laughs> so I learned Mulligan's track in a day. And it's really not that impressive, only because uh, Mulligan Madison follows basically the same track as Lafayette, they're a pair. So after Voltaire taught me my track, cause he is a genius in explaining what to do. He'll be like, all right, cool. After you have your Yorktown rap, make sure that you turn over your right shoulder because if you turn over your left shoulder, Thane's gonna kick you in the face because Dane has to move into your your spot so you know every time I did the show I definitely had a little Voltaire angel just whispering telling me to not mess up um, but he taught me the track really well in a way that I was able to learn it and so the next day I was supposed to work with Patrick Vassell who is uh, the second director uh, and uh, I always want to say like their right hand man, but like there's so many Hamilton puns that I could use. But so he's Tommy's right hand man when it comes to directing. And we had like four hours spaced out for me to walk through the show and sing through it and all that stuff. And I walked, I took him through the entire show in an hour. I walked, I blocked my entire show and then we got to intermission at the show. I was like, do you want to take a break? He was like, do you want to take a break? And I was in very much like a rain man mode where I was like, no, I'm good. I got it. Cause I would like, uh, I learn in a very certain way. So like I, you, it looks like I'm a crazy person walking around talking to himself is what it looks like, but it works. So like, I would literally, I would say my line and be like, uh, you know, and then a hurricane came and devastation rained. Oh man, you know, I did that whole thing. And then I'd be like, all right, cool. And then I have to go here, I have my snaps, I do that. This happens, like I, I will talk out everything that's happening for me and everything around me. And then, you know, there would be certain times where I'd be like, that's right, right? And he'd be like, yep. And so he basically followed me in the rehearsal room and, uh, and then he, well, we finished the show and then he looked at his watch and he was like, well, I don't know what we're supposed to do for the next three hours. So then we had, um, we called Amber, the stage manager at the time. Oh no, she's still the stage manager. Um, and uh, my friend Cindy Winters was starting to learn her tracks. And so we brought her in so that we could do partner dancing because instead of taking four hours to do one thing, I, I just got it done in an hour. Um, but yeah, that's how my brain works. So uh mulligan madison was like four weeks they try to give you four weeks per role and then uh hamilton was third i had four weeks to learn him 
And I was supposed to learn Lawrence Phillip, but I kept on getting pushed back because at um, uh, at the time, Javi had a had a had a back injury, and so I I stepped in for like six weeks, I think. Um, it got like I still have like the little paper clipping because it got like announced on like Broadway World and like AM New York, and I was like super stoked. And I was like, all right, cool. So I was the guy for like six weeks, but also just pushed back every time I was supposed to learn Lawrence Phillip. So Lawrence Phillip, I didn't really get to do a lot. I probably did him like 20 times, like 20 performances. Uh, Hamilton was, and yeah, I counted because when I booked the job, I was like the emergency, emergency Hamilton. Like we had Javi and we had Michael Awoye, who's out of this world uh and so i was like well i'm never gonna go on if i go on it's gonna be like five times uh i did it like 221 and then lafayette jefferson and mulligan were easily easily 100 each probably like 80 to 100 each and then lawrence phillip was like 20 20 times maybe um but yeah i came in right when the a, a lot of the original cast was leaving so when there was a whole bunch of turnover happening i kind of came in at the perfect time to just do the tracks a lot so that's that's why i was able to get a lot of you know performances under my belt um but yeah so i got to work with a whole bunch of the original cast um and they were great and then it was cool when there was you know the new cast because most of them were people that I had already worked with at Motown. So it literally was like going to work with my friends. That is so cool. So for those like 200 performances as Hamilton, and since you said you were the emergency Hamilton, were those besides the six weeks where you took over for Javier, was it like a last minute notice that you got for them? Well, as a standby, it's like, it's kind of always up in the air. There are times that you know you're scheduled to go on. Like when Javi was still there uh, as, and then Michael Awoye left because he started the the national tour that started in Los Angeles or San Francisco and then went to LA. Then it was me and Donald Weber. And then we were the alternates. And then we would switch every Sunday. So we knew that we had that planned. And then things can happen where somebody gets sick you know, or um, somebody, you know, call out. Uh, I've gotten swung on mid-show a few times for different for different characters. Um, I would I want to say a lot of it's planned, but it's it's not. As a standby, like you kind of just kind of always have to be on call. So I actually changed my my text alert. My so our stage manager's name was Amber. And I changed her text alert to an Amber alert because then I would actually know because I had like PTSD for a while. Like anytime I got a text, I'd be like, oh, crap, am I, am, who am I today? And I needed to not have that stress anymore. So I knew when it was an Amber alert, like, all right, it's something about my job. But if it was a regular text message, I'd be like, oh, it's probably my mom. Um, but yeah, when you're standby, you don't there's always going to be a couple of shows that you know about but there are definitely times where you get a call that morning and you know um somebody's sick or uh you get a call and something happens 30 minutes before the show and then it's just like go warm up and put your costume on like there's there's a million different things that can happen so uh yeah to to answer the question honestly no, a lot of it wasn't planned. I was kind of like thrown in when, I was definitely the guy that like, you just like high five so he can like take your turn. That was me for a good chunk of it. And like, I'm super grateful for it because it was, it was, a, it was a lot of fun. So what was it like for you finding out sometimes a half hour before a performance that you were going on? Um, I used to have a joke uh, cause I was just super grateful to be in the show. Um, 
so I would, I would, anytime people would be like, are you okay with doing that? I would just like hold up an invisible contract and I'd be like, my contract states that I'm have to go on whenever you guys tell me. Like it was like a running joke. Um, so I just, I, for me, Hamilton was just such an opportunity to like, to know what it was like to, to know what it's like to be in a, like what I call a pillar of Broadway show, you know, like the pillar shows that we have now are like Lion King, Book of Mormon, Phantom of the Opera, uh, Chicago, Hamilton's like never going to go anywhere. So I was just like super stoked just to be, just to be, a, just to be a part of it. Yeah, 100%. So I guess how in your brain are you keeping these tracks so straight in your head, especially when you're going on with so little notice so regularly? Oh, I, uh, I'm also a very visual learner. So it's, it's two things. It was, I played mirror games and then I would actually kind of just sing the whole show in, in my head. Um, so like I would wait for my imaginary bouncy ball on on the words you know like when we were kids and we had the little sing-along thing that had the bounce ball so i did that but then also because so andy blankenbuehler is really smart when he choreographs his show because a lot of things he also does is, is shapes or at least with this show for me it was shapes so i could always visualize all right cool if i'm hamilton if i'm lawrence phillip this day where is Lafayette, where's Lafayette and where's Mulligan? Because we're always a triangle. So I would have to just, and then uh, if I was playing somebody else, I'd just flip it. But then also there were times where I would just on the subway, I would literally um, just close my eyes and run through the entire show in 30 minutes, like visually, or if we were doing a two show day and maybe I found out I was going on for the night show, uh, once everybody left after the first show, I would walk the stage. I would just walk my track. But also everybody in the show understands how hard it is. So if you're slightly in the wrong spot or whatever, like, you know, we say in the industry shove with love. Now we don't literally shove you. We point with our eyes maybe where you're supposed to be. But um, the great thing about the cast of Hamilton is that everyone understands how hard it is, but also everyone understands that they don't just put anybody in that show for, for a reason. So everybody, there's a huge level of trust every time that you hit that stage with everybody. So um, yeah, I trusted everybody on that stage because you know there's so many moving parts i mean even the floor moves so you you have to really trust everybody and everybody has each other's back and that's what made um being part of hamilton really really enjoyable yeah totally so especially with that kind of level of trust would you say that there was like a particular level of camaraderie that you even saw backstage that kind of translated on stage too or yeah i mean there's a stage there's a show behind the show um you know, uh, like you, you'll be listening to the show and then, you know, you hear your cue line and then you're like, all right, I got to go to stage right. Or, or like you're hanging out in the green room and you're hanging out with the prop guys, uh, you know. So I don't know if you got, a, when you came and saw Hamilton, if you got like a backstage tour or went down to the green room or anything, but like it's a really, everything is kind of like in one room. So everybody kind of just like, chill down there or you can go to one of the dressing rooms during during the show but um yeah not only do you learn the show but you learn your backstage traffic and you learn um when you when you can go to the bathroom like those are important in your track i could probably still remember when i could for each character but also like that's also knowledge that gets passed down to you from the people before you. They're like, all right, cool. So you get your wig done and then you go downstairs and you still have two minutes. So if you need to go to the bathroom, you do that now, because if you don't, then you're not going to be able to do it until like another 45 minutes. So like you, you have to also plot your, 
your track off stage as well because but it has to fit in with what everyone else is doing like because the costumers have their own backstage track like you can't get in their way about stuff the props guys do they have to switch things out a certain time so like it is it's a musical within a, a musical which is which is really fun but like once you like figure it out it all becomes second nature and then like even when you're off stage in your spot you can like still kind of hang out and goof off a little bit um because you know we're all at work and we're all having a really good time but once you hit that stage you know it's all business yeah that's awesome it's it's crazy to think about that you have almost like your own track backstage also like as performers ourselves we definitely know what that's like to have a track on stage and off stage so that's it's really crazy to think about yes the show so, within the show a show within a show per that's yeah <laughs> so of your different tracks which one do you think was your favorite track and why i mean i'll say hamilton because he's of of the tracks is the only one that you really get to play him from start to finish everybody else is split um, but Jefferson is a very, 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 very close second. Like something about that purple jacket when you put it on, like you rehearse the role and it's great and it's fun. But then when you put on the costume and then you start doing it, it new choices come up, a different swag happens. Um, so yeah, it's like it's Hamilton and then Jefferson is like literally like right there. He's super, super close. And also he was my first one that I debuted. Um, so that was always really, really special to me. It was also crazy because I remember the first time I went on, my parents, my parents were there, <clears throat> but they also weren't familiar with the show really. Like they knew of it, but my mom didn't want to listen to to it first. She just wanted to like experience it. So she didn't know that I opened the second act. So like, she is just super free. And it's like, I, I always find out where my people are sitting so that like, um, I can either avoid them at certain times or I can like play up to them at certain times. So I knew exactly where she was. So I gave her a little wave and a wink. Um, but then it's like, you know, it's like eight minutes of just Jefferson for the whole first, in part of the second act so uh it was definitely cool to watch her like freak out but also not know that that's what was going to happen so yeah jefferson for sure is a very very close second it's like one and one a oh my god i love that would you say that you get like this is something that i experience when i perform i get so much more nervous when i know i have people in the audience is that you too or do you tend to enjoy when you have people there uh, I mean, I I enjoy it. It's still nerve wracking um, uh, because like they're your friends and you'll see them again at some point. So it's like you horribly mess up. They like remember that one time you scattered on stage during Hamilton, which happened plenty of times. Um, uh, but yeah, um, I I always think of this this thing that my dad told me because I asked him if he still gets nervous before going on stage and he's like, yeah, I do all the time, but it's not about having butterflies, it's about getting your butterflies to fly in formation. So um, as long as you do that, then you're gonna be, you're gonna be okay. I feel like I need to quote your dad on that until the end of time. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I thought he came up with that quote forever. And then like, a, you know, five or 10 years ago, he was like, oh no, I took that from the Dalai Lama. I was like, oh, come on, man. I've been telling people it's been you this whole time. But uh, no, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely something that I live by too. Because I feel like if you really care, you'll be nervous regardless. If I, I feel like when people don't care is when you probably fall flat on your face. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So... Um... Pre-pandemic, walk us through a day of your life on Broadway and what you would do before the shows or just what you would do in your everyday life before COVID happened. <laughs> so a pre-Broadway show day is, um, well, it really depends on what the schedule is for the week. Like there are sometimes as an understudy, 
uh, where we have extra rehearsals because we're putting somebody into the show or we're having just a brush up. Like we would usually like once a month at least have a, a run through with understudies and stuff just so we could still have it fresh. But um, sleep, coffee, um, uh, when, I, when my dog was still here, I would walk my dog in the morning, um, watch uh, ESPN, uh, stretch a little bit, go to the gym, maybe work out if I had uh, something scheduled for me to go to the gym. Um, and then kind of like, kind of just hang out because you kind of have like all day to do stuff and then you go to work at night. So it was always really trippy to like, be going to the subway, but watching everyone coming home from their day. And I'm like, well, my day is actually kind of just starting. And then, um, yeah, go to the show. If you're on, you're on. If you're not, then you kind of like hang out with the people that are on as well. Or, you know, you might watch the show because uh, we have somebody who's new in a track and you want to support them, or you're learning a track and you want to watch. Um, and then, I mean, especially when you're when you do the show, you're on such a uh, show high that it takes you a while to get down from that. So, like, I'd come home and I would roll my my legs out for a solid hour. I would have like I'd roll out and I'd stretch and I'd drink a whole bunch of water. Um, but yeah, the thing about Broadway is. Uh, every, you know, you kind of have to just treat yourself like an, like an athlete, like training for the Olympics. Like, uh, you know, like, yeah, you can have fun with your friends and stuff, but not as much as you used to. Like you kind of are giving yourself and your life and your, and your personal time to your job. And, you know, that might have some drawbacks sometimes where there might be something you can't go to because you have to be responsible and take care of yourself. Um, so, I mean, it was great that there was a pandemic a little bit, just so everybody could kind of just like sit and rest. But, you know, everybody's really, really antsy to, to get back. Um, it's been too long, <laughs> it's been a year. Uh, but I mean, I, I have some other things and projects that I've, been, that I've been doing that have been keeping me busy. So at least I haven't like gone super stir crazy. But uh, yeah, before a, a day before going to work on Broadway is kind of like doing all your errands and things that you know that you need to do to take care of yourself and then going to work and then trying to get to sleep at a decent hour. <laughs> Sleeping at a decent hour sounds very foreign, not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, it's still very foreign. <laughs> So you mentioned um, you've got some kind of pandemic projects up in the air. What have you been working on throughout the past freaking year of the Broadway closure? I can't believe it's been a year. Uh, I've just, you know, been writing stuff for myself. I'm, I'm on a new show called 20s on BET, and we're going to start shooting season two in May. We were supposed to shoot it last fall, but then L.A. became, you know, the epicenter and um, and we can't really shoot the show anywhere else because Los Angeles is also kind of a character of the show. Um, so, and we actually just had a read through of season two yesterday. So it's been like, it's just fun to know that we're getting back to work, but I've really just kind of just been hanging out with myself. Uh, you know, I, I was in Hamilton for like two and a half years. And then I did a show at the Old Globe um, called The Gods of Comedy. And then I went directly into filming 20s after that. And then that was over. And then uh, we went to the, the opening party, uh, me and my girlfriend in LA. And then a week later, COVID hit. <laughs> and so, like I was on such like a, a whirlwind of like doing so many things. And then what we thought was gonna be like a two week snow day turned into a year. Um, but, you know, I, I tried to be as uh, 
positive as I could during that time because an advice I would give every actor, save your money. Just you never know when the ultimate rainy day is gonna happen. The ultimate rainy day happened. I'm very grateful that um, that I've been able to like stay in New York. Um, but uh, I, I kind of just took this time for myself. I, I, my body also still needed to heal from Hamilton. Uh, I, you know, I'm very lucky. I never got like seriously injured or anything. Uh, but you know, my hips and my knees were feeling like they were 65. So I needed to really just kind of slow down and take, take care of myself mentally and physically. And, um, yeah, 2020 has actually been a really, really still a good year, uh, for me personally. So, you know, that was a, that was a huge win for me. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. That's so huge to have that kind of optimistic outlook. I love that. Yeah. yeah, there have been so many negatives of 2020, 2021, but oh, there have. Um, There's relaxing. been a lot of negatives. Like oh, I has. just, I, I def, could... I definitely didn't have a perfect 2020, but I had a good, I had a <laughs> good enough one we. where, I, I had a good enough one where I was like, okay, I, I made it. We're good. 2021 will definitely be better. Um, I mean, we're definitely we're not out of the woods yet, but as long as my family and friends are safe and healthy, that's really all, all all I can ask for yeah yeah well anyone can ask for these <laughs> yeah 100 yeah. yeah so I guess kind of looking been... at, oh, <laughs> I guess kind of looking ahead to 2021 moving into this new hopefully turning the corner slightly getting moving mm -hmm. in the right direction. what are you kind of most excited for as we hopefully start getting back to maybe safer times <laughs> um well uh, when it comes to Broadway, I'm not 100% sure, only because I haven't been there for a little bit. Like, I have friends that kind of tell me things uh, here and there. I know that the new pilot program is starting, where they're going to open certain theaters and kind of do pop-up shows. I, I, you know, I don't have any information if it's, like, going to be, like, a, a full production of, you know, Hamilton or Dear Evan Hansen or something like that, and then they take, like, a week off and then they come back like I don't I don't know any of that I think that the the thing that we all want the audience there and the audience gives us so much um I think what is equally as important if not more important is just the safety of the people that work the show because it's it's having done like quick changes and been in dressing rooms it's it's hard to social distance. So um, I just feel like I wanna know what's gonna happen with vaccinations or are they gonna change the show week and it's not gonna be eight shows a week? Are they going to replace uh, filtration systems for the air in these theaters? Cause also, you know, these theaters are really, really old. So there's going to have to be a lot of things that, that happened. Like my experience is going to be different because when I go to LA, I'm going to be working on a film set. And what's that going to look like? I have some friends that have given me heads up where it's like, all right, you're going to be like in kind of like a pod. And, you know, you, you probably will have like one makeup person, but you might not ever get touch ups because like they have to really limit interaction you always have to wear a mask and then they're also gonna give you a face shield as well. Um, certain departments are gonna be in their own pods and will stay there until they're like called to be used. So I feel like it's all a big learning experience. I think it might be a little bit harder for theater only because of the enclosed environment that, that we're in. And we still need to figure all of that out. I think the thing that we can all agree upon is that everybody just wants to feel safe when they come to work. And I feel everybody should have that right. Um, but I, I do not know of any like insider conversations or plans or things, things of that nature. Um, but I, I do know what everybody else really knows, which is we're shooting for summer, we're shooting for fall and and you know, hopefully, hopefully we'll have a definitive answer of what Broadway is going to look like by fall. In my personal opinion, I think Broadway is going to be back 
in a very good, healthy capacity by fall. But I think that we're going to have to see what happens from now till June, July-ish to really know if that's going to be possible. But, you know, all of us are chomping at the bits to get back to work. There's nothing like live theater. Live theater is one of the greatest experiences ever because, you know, it's it, it, the difference between TV and film is like I can mess up on TV and film and we just take it back and we reshoot it. Like if I mess up in Hamilton, you just kind of keep on going. The show doesn't stop because you messed up. So um, I, I know that it's going to be really, really special and it's going to feel amazing. And there's going to be a lot of happy, happy tears when, when, it, when it comes back. And it, and it will. I mean, it definitely will. I'm not worried about that. Um, but I definitely just want all my my friends and uh, uh, to to be to be safe and and feel safe. And that goes for every department, not just actors. That goes to the hair department, costume department, goes to props, it goes to the musicians, um, because uh, without all of them together, you know, we, we don't have a show to to put on for people. So um, that's that's uh, what I am looking forward to most, just to see how they handle that to make sure that everybody can come back to work safe so that we can give the audience what, uh, what they deserve. Yeah, I can't wait for it to be back, but I just, I can't wait for it to be as safe as it can be, <laughs> you know, don't want to put it yeah. in. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we all, we all want to be safe, you yeah. know, like this has been a horrible, horrible time and it, it's been tough on a lot of people. Like we've, we've adjusted um, you know, some people haven't been as fortunate as others and that, that hurts and that really sucks and it's not fair. But um, we also wanna make sure that we can give you guys this lovely art that we love to do, but also <laughs> make you feel safe while you, while you watch it. I mean, I won't be surprised if just for a little bit, the first four rows of every theater just aren't gonna be sold. Like that is possible. Do I know that as a fact? No, but I would, I mean, with as much singing and just accidental spit that comes out sometimes, like, yeah, I mean, the, I think everybody's, we're going to look at every type of safety precaution that we have, and that's just the responsible thing to do. Yeah, 100%. All right, so kind of wrapping it up, we um, kind of looking at your career and your future and all that jazz, but if you could kind of go back and give past Javon a piece of advice as to Ooh, going on, that's the a good future, one. what would you tell your past self? It's all going to work out. It's all going to work out and you're going to make some great friends. I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's going to work out. That's amazing. That's awesome. That's all that's all anyone ever wants to hear that everything's gonna work out for the best. Mm hmm Yep. All right. Well, Javon, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. We can't tell you how much we appreciate your coming on and taking the time with us. I today. had a I had an absolute pressure. I'm I'm very surprised that my cat didn't wake up and try to photobomb the uh the interview, but she is she's dead asleep next to the radiator. <laughs> we usually nice, when nice one of us is on the <laughs> yeah, it's nice and warm. We usually when one of us is on the computer, she's just like, oh, you're on the computer? Let me go see what's going on. I'm very surprised that she didn't do that. So, <laughs> but I had a, I had a great time. Oh my God. Thank you so much It's such a pleasure. Seriously, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, of course. To connect with Javon on Instagram and Twitter, check out at Javon McFerrin, where you can find information about coaching opportunities and keep up to date on his latest projects. Also, be sure to follow Theatrical Thoughts at Theatrical Thoughts Podcast on Instagram as well. Yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in and we will see you in the next episode. Thanks again, Javon. You're very welcome. Bye guys. Bye everyone. <laughs>